I'm Jason. I'm no Doom Master or anything. I'm just some guy that likes to play the game and wanted to give you a few helpful hints on how to stay alive for you beginners. This is for people who haven't played a whole lot of Doom. If you're interested in Doom, you said, hey, oh, I played that in college or whatever. That was a lot of fun. What's this Doom 3 about? This is where you need to be. Now, this isn't just some sort of standard shoot 'em up type of game. This is a mystery to be unlocked. You've got to go through, you've got to talk to people, you've got to read your PDA, you've got to read computer screens, pick up clues along the way that are going to help you get to the next level and ultimately, hopefully, defeat the demons of hell. This game is very, very dark. Like, literally dark. Not like dark in tone, although it is that as well. I'm talking dark as in I can't see a damn thing in front of my face. That's why you're going to become friends with your flashlight. You're going to get so used to using your flashlight that you're going to enter a new level and be like, Hello, darkness, my old friend. Here's my flashlight! You're going to become very adept at switching back and forth between your flashlight and your weapon. Flashlight is the best tool you have. Also, a makeshift weapon if need be. You can whack somebody over the head. If you've got a gun, go with that, but if need be, you can whack somebody in the head with a, with a flashlight. You gotta be committed to play this game. This isn't some game of Pac-Man where you're done in half an hour. This is saving the universe from hell. It takes some time. There's codes to unlock, there's riddles to solve, and there's demons to kill. So be ready for it. From the very earliest of the Doom death matches, it became readily apparent that one of the keys to success in this game was gonna be the ability to scream profanities at the screen. This game lends itself to the player continually screaming profanities at the top of their lungs. And it makes you feel better. But believe me, when some zombie thing jumps out at you at the dark and starts screaming and you hear the howls of hell, you're gonna wanna let fly with a son of a Also, there's something really satisfying about killing the demon that's been keeping you from the next level after about an hour and ripping out a good old fashioned, eat that you know having six eyed You feel really good about that some body comes swinging down out of the out of the rafters at you there's nothing wrong with letting loose with a f me running backwards through the woods with a hedgehog that's all right there's never any downtime by the way sometimes dead ain't dead you see that zombie laying over on the floor and you walk over me reaches up and grabs your ass, turn around and blow his head off things come out from under the stairs things come up behind you things come up out of the ceiling see that's not good you don't want to see dead bodies flying around and people laughing and throwing stuff at you so you better be ready to know what you're getting into. One important skill to know is what weapons you have and how you can quickly switch between them because some weapons are more effective than other weapons. Like you don't want to use a shotgun for a long distance battle, but it's very effective when you're fighting somebody up close. You gotta stay locked and loaded, soldier. You don't want to be going into a fight and start pulling the trigger into, oh, whoops, now I gotta load. No, you can be loading on the fly, you can be loading on the run. If there's a brief pause, which believe me, there's not many, there's not as many as you think. Because if you get into a fight like this here, you're gonna see these guys coming at you. Guess what happens? You're trying to reload on the fly in the middle of a battle and that's a bad, bad thing. If you have all your other weapons loaded up, you can switch pretty easily to the next weapon and be ready to rock and roll with that one. Unless it's a chainsaw, it's pretty much always loaded. Go and get you some health. There you go, kid. You want to be saving the game constantly, or you're going to have to go back to the beginning. Good times to save. You just powered up and got full health. Don't be saving when you've got like 10% health. It does you no good because you're going to start there over and over and over, and then you're stuck. You just got some new gun. You just got a new PDA or a code key. Any of the little milestones throughout the game, you're going to want to continually save. If you get through a level, save. Save, save, save. It also gives you a chance to rest your thumbs because believe me, you will get a cramp. A lot of the power-ups, armors, med kits, things like that are hidden. Some of them are out in the open, but there's also some that are hidden like in the vents, where you can crawl around in the vents if you think you're stuck, maybe you're not, look for a vent. Also off these dead zombies here, you can always get their weapons. Any of the zombies that are shooting with you, they're called the, uh, the security zombies, or the z -Sec. They always have weapons. PDAs are very important. Those are something that you really want to make sure that you pick up as you go through the game. A lot of times they're by computers, and sometimes they're by the dead bodies. The PDAs help give you secret codes on how to unlock some of these lockers. They also let you eavesdrop on people's secret romances. 
Just kidding. They actually help you find out a little bit more about what's going on at the game, how to better strategize. You're going to listen to voicemails. You're going to read emails, get some information as you go through and pick up all these PDAs throughout the game. You're playing detective, so you want to make sure you get all the clues you can. If you engage in a battle, don't just stand there like a jackass. Your deer in the headlights are just going to take you out. You can duck, you can dodge, use cover, use the corners. Go around a corner and then come back around the corner make them come to you. It's always a good idea if you go into a new room to go in carefully. Maybe you back out a little bit to let somebody come and get you instead of being ambushed. Don't be scared to go backwards in order to help yourself get forward. But you always want to make sure you watch your back even after you beat somebody in front of you because you never know. Duck. See? I can't stress this enough, don't get complacent. Because no matter where you think you just looked, those demons come up out of anywhere. Every dark corner has a zombie waiting for you and they will ambush you and they want to eat your head. So there's your intro into the world of Doom 3. But listen, the only way to learn how to play is to go play. So go jump on in, have some fun, kill some zombies. Just keep your eyes and ears open and use your head because you're going to need strategy as well as skill if you're going to make it out of here alive. Go knock yourself out. Have fun. Goodbye. Good luck. And go to hell. <laughs>